Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. You guys, I hope you enjoy this video as much as I'm gonna enjoy making it. It's doubtful because I love hammers and I love hammering nails. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of that. But anyways, today we are comparing the T-Bone 3 15 ounce stiletto with a steel striking face, all titanium body, rubber handle, with the 16 ounce titanium stiletto, wood handle, milled face. I always like to buy milled faces for my framing hammers. Um, you know, that way they don't bounce off of things so much. And you can see that I've blunted it a bit. That way, if I mess up and hit my thumbnail, it's not gonna like grab my thumbnail and pull it off. So that's actually kind of important. I always blunt the tips of those first. Now, just taking an up close look at these two, we can see that the milled face of this, the little squares are farther apart than on this one. And they're probably also gonna last longer because they're deeper. So this one on the titanium face is not very deep. And this is the steel face. The other thing I notice is that this one when I compare them just like this, the T-bone has about a couple of mils wider striking face. However, the chamfer, there's such a big chamfer on this one that the actual striking face is about the same size. Now, I've never owned this hammer, the T-bone. I mean, I, I have, like I bought it. This one's mine. <laughs> I bought this one too. I probably spent more money on buying these hammers than I'll make on this video, but that's besides the point. Um, the point is, I have owned one of these. For a long time, I had a 16 ounce titanium stiletto. And one of the things I know about this hammer is that these mush out fast. So that's a, one of the really disappointing things. Like if you're using it on a nail bar a lot or hitting a crowbar, these mush out really fast. And what tends to happen is, let's say you have to denail a bunch of plywood. So you're hitting those two and a quarter nails out of the plywood and because it's gotten all flat, it tends to glance off of them all the time. So that's one thing I've noticed about having an all titanium head is the durability is not very good. I've had two of these, this will be my third and both times it mushed out pretty fast, especially for a hammer that's as expensive as it is. So this one on the other hand has a steel face. Now there's gonna be a plus side and a downside to this. So the plus side is that this face is not gonna mushroom out anywhere near as fast. The downside is that it's got a little Allen key here. So it can get loose and you're going to have to maybe keep an Allen key in your belt so that you can tighten it sometimes. Make sure that this stays in alignment, but that could be a little bit of a headache. The plus side to this is that you can change this out as soon as this one does get totally mashed out and mushroomed. And you can also switch it out to a smooth face if you wanted to. Now, personally, I probably wouldn't ever do that because I think you're just asking for problems interchanging faces all the time. Like it's gonna get loose more likely. Like if it isn't getting loose, I'm not gonna mess around with it. Okay, now the claws on both of these are, they're very similar. When I look at those, you know, just a typical beautiful stiletto claw. So I've noticed that stilettos have one of my favorite claws on almost all hammers. The only hammer that I like that has a claw better than this, in my opinion, is the Vaughn California Framer. Vaughn hammers have just the best claws, in my opinion. They're so sharp. So like when you're, when you're needing to pull a nail out, the Vaughns are even sharper than the stilettos and they'll just grab it so well. But the stilettos, I would say are my second favorite in that department. All right, now moving on from the claw, um, the T-bone has this really obvious nail puller right here. So that's pretty cool. I've never even actually tried that. So let's get a nail in and give that a try. Ooh, that works really well. You know, it's funny, my wife was asking me how well one of these straight claw hammers pulls a nail, and I had to explain the difference between a straight claw and a curved claw, but um, that nail puller right there, that works almost as good as a curved claw hammer. Like, it was really nice. It had good leverage. Instead of having to do that little thing where I grab it with the claw and twist it like that, it was just whoosh, really good. I mean, you could tell by my reaction. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, next, moving on down to the shaft. Well, it's gonna be really hard to break this one. Now, in all fairness, I've never actually broken a wood-handled stiletto hammer. 
Um, that's not because they're indestructible. It's because I have a tendency to be able to gauge how much torque I can actually put on a wood handle without breaking it. I've actually never broken a wood handled hammer, yet I've worked with people that break them all the time. And so that just tells me that for some reason they're not gauging how they should be torquing on their wood handled hammers. And I've also had the 14 ounce stiletto and it has um, a much thinner piece right here that attaches to the head. And I still didn't break that one, although I was much more careful with that one. So, I mean, if you don't wanna break your wood handled hammer, make sure you have a nail bar handy at all times. It's the guys that don't have nail bars that are breaking their wood handled hammers all the time. That being said, I also had a tendency, I mean, I've mentioned in videos, I don't like buying tools very much with the exception of hammers. I, I really like hammers, so. I never had a hammer for more than like four to six months without buying a new one. <laughs> because I wanted to try them all too, right? Um, but there's a lot of brands I didn't try. Anyways, so obviously it's gonna be much more durable. You're just, you're not gonna snap this one, right? Like, I mean, it's an all titanium handle. Like, this thing is gonna be really good for people doing form work because it's virtually indestructible. Also, um, before you go relying on everything I say in this video, read the comments. And anybody who's got some opinions and experiences with these hammers, leave a comment. Because you'll always get more information from the comments than you will from me. Anyways, um, the last thing that I've noticed about this is the way the grips feel. So I really like the grip on this one. I didn't like it too much at first until I started messing around with this one again. And I was like, well, first off, I mean, I barely feel like I have any grip. It want, feel like it wants to come flying out of my hands. It also feels like it kind of tapers from here down a little bit. So like right here, I feel like I have a secure grip. But if I choke up on the handle, um, I feel like, you know, the glory zone where you want to be holding this thing for hammering, it just doesn't feel like it's going to stay in my hand unless I either put gloves on or put tape on. Uh, it's a cold, dry day. My hands are really dry. I feel like it wants to fly out of my hands. So this one definitely has the benefit of being really nice in my hand right there. Okay, so moving on, how do they feel in my hands? Um, the one thing I don't like about this is this little thumb thing that they put on here. I don't know who holds their hammer like this and who hits things with their thumb like that. That doesn't seem like a good idea. If you do, again, leave a comment and tell me how much you hate me because I don't. But no, the point is I don't feel like I need that. I actually wish it wasn't there because I don't like the way it feels when I'm choked up on it right there. Um, it makes me feel like I want to have my hand way down here. Hmm? Okay, my wife just interrupted me. I think I should explain the weird little silence there. Um, she asked, why do we choke up on hammers? Sometimes you don't want the full swing. So the further down your hand is on a hammer, the harder you can swing it, but the less control you have. So, I mean, you're not really gonna wanna start nails, you know, like choked all the way down. Like it just feels a bit sketchy, right? You're gonna wanna be up a little bit. Anyways. If you need more finesse, you choke up on the handle. If you need more power, you go down. Um, but let's get into that a little bit more. I can't remember what I was gonna say because I was interrupted. She loves to ask questions. <laughs> okay, I was talking about how it feels in my hand. So this one feels like really well balanced and like it's not gonna fly out of my hands. This one, the balance for some reason feels off. So where you want to have your hand when hammering with this thing, it feels top heavy. And that also adds to the feeling of it wanting to fly out of my hands. So if you had a different handle maybe, maybe if you're using the straight uh, handle instead of the ax handle, it might feel a little different, but this handle specifically just feels like, it feels like my hand wants to slip down onto it all the time. So I'm not crazy about that. Like I want my hand to feel secure anywhere I choose to put it on the handle. Um, now let's get to the weight and balance of this one. So this one actually feels lighter. Like when I'm just going like this, the top of the hammer feels lighter and I can feel more weight down here. So this actually feels more balanced to me. I actually like it better. And when I'm driving nails, it feels pretty good like this. So speaking of driving nails, we've been talking a lot about how these feel. It's time to start driving some nails. So first, I need somewhere just to put some nails. Cause I got this big bag of nails right here. I got these crusty old sawhorses that were here when I moved in. And um, I wanna get myself somewhere to put these nails. Okay, let's start with the T-bone. I 
like this. Whoop, it's windy. Blowing the hammer all over the place. Okay, now I at least have somewhere to put this. Okay, so we need to get this thing up to an ergonomic hammering height. That's too low, you know what I mean? I need it up closer to about here. So let's drive some nails and get that happening. Also, it's pretty wobbly. Let's do something about that. This should help with the wobble. Okay, one feature that's pretty cool, both of these hammers have it, is the magnet. You gotta love the magnet on these things, especially when you really have to reach for something. Very nice. I'm gonna just keep using that, that's fun. Okay. Upside down nails don't work that well. Okay, so let's just start nailing pieces onto this thing. And we'll start to see what the average amount of strikes it is for each one of these. So I always like to organize all my nails in my hand in the same direction. It's just one of those things. I actually make sure they're all organized in my pouch, but I'm not wearing one if you haven't noticed. Okay. This is on the edge. It's bouncing all over the place, so it's gonna take a lot of hits. But once we start getting there, Yeah, I really like this hammer, actually. I like it more than I thought. Um, I had a bias coming into this, and I'll tell you guys what my bias was after we finished the video. Whoop. Oh, geez, it's really windy. because I'm trying to show off. Once you start trying to show off, um, yeah, you start missing. Okay, let's try this guy. Now we're getting closer to a nice comfy height, and now we're also gonna be going into two more solid layers. This one, you know, I mean, that's mush. That's not hard to nail into. Yeah, so my hand's all the way down at the bottom. That's where it just naturally goes to with this hammer. So that's nowhere near where it needs to be. Oh, need a little toenail. Come over this side. Need a little toenail to bring this one over. There we go. A toenail, for anyone who's wondering, is when you nail diagonally into something as opposed to straight in. Jeez, dropping a lot of these. Oh. Let's get a few more of these in here. One, two, three. Oh, that went right in between them. <laughs> yeah, I want grip or gloves on this one. Definitely, I got too many nails in my hand. Yeah, way too many nails in my hand. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's go back to this one. Because I was actually really liking this one. <laughs> Such a train wreck. <laughs> mm, there's nothing there. Yeah, I really like this one actually. So the one thing that is really obvious and the reason that I never liked this hammer when I tried other people's is there is more vibration. Honestly, like I can definitely feel the vibration coming through. Whoop. So yeah, definitely more vibration from this. And guys, I'm not saying this is a bad hammer. When I had it, I loved it. 
Let's see if we can get some more redeeming hits here. Like this one definitely feels better if you've got elbow problems or something or like just basically problems from hammering too much. I think this one is going to be better for you. And my hand is not feeling so dry right now that I'm actually starting to get some grip. But yeah, it's feeling better and I think as the finish wears off and it gets a little grainier, it'll have a bit more grip. And you know, you can also, you can sand a wood handle and change the grip. So that's something I didn't mention. Like I had these before and this handle feels a lot better than they did about eight years ago. Eight years ago, they used to be really fat right here and it definitely had your hand wanting to slide down. So this is actually a lot improved over the one I used to have, but I took that one back then and I sanded it. Like I totally changed the shape of it until it felt so good in my hand. And it didn't change the strength either. It just made it work better for me. So that's one thing about a wood handled hammer. Okay, let's try this one again. I think we need a new piece of wood, huh? Oh, now we're getting up to optimum height. These are just three inch nails, three inch bright common, nothing fancy about them. No idea what penny they are, that's silly talk. Just three inch common nails. Okay, let's line this up right from the start so I don't have to do that toenailing again. Yeah, I like this hammer, but I am feeling that vibration. I'm getting warm out here. It's gotta be like eight degrees Celsius. I mean, all my winter stuff. Oh, oh, that was the head of another nail I hit there. All right, what is that? One, two, three. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's see if we can straighten that out with these nice claws. Yeah. Yeah, no nail left behind. Yeah, leave that one behind. <laughs> that looks like some of the earthworms I found on the tennis court this morning. Oh. All right, last try on this one. <laughs> what does he got? Five nails. That's a reasonable amount. I shouldn't drop any of those. One, two, three. Set. One, two, three. Set. One, two, three. Set. One, two, three. Okay, that's pretty consistent. Is that what I was getting with this one? I haven't been using hammers a lot, so I'm I'm only just like just kind of getting my swing back right here. One, two, three. Windy. My dad told me that one. One, two. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting the same amount of drives every time. So it's pretty equal in that regard. Definitely feel the same, but I like the balance of this better. The only thing I don't like about this one as much is that little bit of vibration. Again, okay, I had a bias when I was coming into this. I thought for sure I was gonna like this one better because it's what I liked better in the past. Um, having tried this one for a little bit, I actually like this one a lot more and knowing that this one mushrooms out and knowing that this one is not going to mushroom out because it's a fully steel head, and is replaceable, in all honesty, this one wins. It's a lot more expensive, like pretty much double, but you're never gonna break the handle. You can replace the head. It's not gonna mushroom out. It has better grip. Um, and overall, I just kind of like the feel of it a bit more. Uh, yeah, so I would buy this one, but let's get back to some of the pros of this one. So the pros to this one, less vibration a lot cheaper.
while you can't change the heads out, it's going to be a smooth faced hammer in about three or four months anyways. And last but not least, especially for somebody with some dainty piano hands like me, you can sand this handle smaller if it feels a little bit too big for you or if it doesn't have the proportions in the right spot. Um, so yeah, I like this one better. I still think this one's great. But um, I actually stopped buying stilettos because I started using just regular steel hammers again because I got tired of the steel heads mushrooming out. So um, real quick, if you've made it this far, maybe we should go grab one more hammer and give it a few drives. But uh, that's gonna be a comparison video for the next time. Sneak preview. All right, you guys. Um, my wife was just trying this one while I was running to find my Vaughn. She likes this one better, or she tried them both but she likes the wood handled titanium one better. Okay, the Vaughn, 23 ounce. Moment of truth though, I actually put my hand in a little puddle just to make it a bit wet, so I actually had some grip. Yeah, let's try this guy. I have more control with those other ones, although I'm calibrated to them right now. It's a bear. It takes a lot more energy to bring it up. Hey, I'm not telling you what I think. That's for another video. Go click on something else. Oh yeah, my accuracy is so down on this one. Still four, isn't it? Or set one, two, three. Yeah, I'm done. Thanks for watching.